we are going to be going to the part two of uh, empower to go over. Empower to go over. In the book of Second Kings, chapter two, six to fourteen, we read this day first. They will be started this series. Second Kings two, six to fourteen. And Elijah said unto him, Tally, I pray thee here, for the Lord, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided either and either. So that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I will do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless. If thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, and they still went on and thought that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and a horse of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted either and either. And Elisha went over. You are going over every obstacle of your life. In the name of Jesus. Two days ago we started this series and we said that in life there are many others. Since from the point, in fact, before you will be born, you have to cross many others. There are many others in life. Some people succeed in crossing to some point and finally get to some particular and sometimes it seems as if the others get higher and higher. So you will need to leap higher and higher. But the leaping power of some people gets to their limit when they get to a particular point and they are not able to go over and they get stuck in life. Some people they will tell you that ah they were making progress when they were ah when I was in primary school, when I was a little, I was very bright, I was just going all of a sudden they got stuck in life. Well, I'm praying that in any area of your life that you are stuck, let the power of God come upon you and let there be lifting up over that obstacle in the name of Jesus. Amen. And two days ago, we brought up, we started bringing up the lessons from this passage that we read. We said that there are some things that you cannot get from a foul. The source of the prophet, the Bible said that they were viewing from afar. Elisha also was the son of the prophet, but he was close to Elijah. In fact, Elijah was telling him, go back, go back. He said, no, 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 let me go. And until he got to the very end, because he was close, he was able to get the double portion. And he told us that the first day that anointing is one of the things that you cannot be watching go from afar or serving from afar and expect the best of his anointing. And that is why today we actually did the practical anointing. And I'm praying that as you have come again today, there will be divine impartation in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But today we are going to be talking about another point that is very critical from the lesson that we will be, we are, we, the passage that we just read. We are going to be taking another point. Point number two is that you must keep moving on. 
when you know that you are in the right path, even when there is no results that you can see, you can just put this in your way. Just keep moving on. When you know you are in the right path, yet there is no results at sight. No, the tendency is that when you already you are, you are convinced that this is what you are supposed to do, this is the line that God has designed you to be in, and you, you start walking in that line, and there is no result. The tendency is that you want to stop. I be this is not where I'm supposed to be. I mean, this is not the profession I'm supposed to be in. I mean, is it okay to even serve God like this? The tendency is that you start questioning your initial conviction. Especially when there are challenges on the way. Even though it's the right path, does not mean that there will not be challenges. Elisha must have heard in his spirit, follow this guy to the very end. But the same person that he was, yet that was come in the middle of the way. It was not the devil that told them. It was Jesus Christ. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, his disciple now, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose what? A not even a small one. A great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the inner part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, care thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. He was the one that told them, let us go over to the other side. Keep on moving. Yet, there was storm. Who told you the fact that God has told you that you should do that thing? You will not have challenges. Who told you? Another thing you will not not yet, but not is that he did not tell them and said, "Be going." He was actually in the ship with them, and the storm still blew. Don't allow challenges to drive you back on the path that you have received an initial conviction. That is life. Elijah kept on telling him, go back. The tendency is that you will have just gone back. That this one said, he's discouraging me. And it is like, my presence is not really appreciated here. But if God has already told you your spirit, follow him to the very end. Don't mind the disgrace sometimes. Don't mind the inconvenience. Don't mind the thing, the shame sometimes. The Bible says that Jesus Christ endured the shame. He was looking at something at the very end. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The Bible says that look, you should look unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. And because he did not mind all those discomforting things at the present, he was able to get to the very end. In life, there will be Egypt. There's a story that, or poem, that I read some years ago, and it has stuck to my mind and my spirit since that time. Maybe you must have read it too. It's about a man that had a dream in that poem. And he said that in that dream, he saw two steps, sets of footsteps. And he perceived that one was his own and one was God's own. And it, 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 the, the footsteps were on the sand, the sand of life. And I discovered that all the time that he was having challenges, those period he was always seeing a set of footsteps in that dream. But when things were okay, you will see two, and he felt disappointed. But God, you say you will be with me. How come it's only me that I'm alone? 
anytime I had challenges, but when things are okay, I will now see from the footstep that you are with me. And the Lord now answered it. Those times that you saw that singular set of footsteps, they were actually my own. I was carrying you at that time. Are you going through any form of challenge? And it seems as if you want to give up. No, don't give up. In the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, Isaiah 43, verse 2, God did not lie to us. He has already told us that. Don't worry, you will go through some things. But He has promised us one thing His presence. God did not promise us a problem free life. He never promised that in any way in the scripture. But what He promised His children is that even when you are going to, I will be with you. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions. Those lions were ugly lions. But because God was with him, they could not do him anything. How do I know that they were hungry? By the time they now threw some other people inside, the Bible said that before they even landed, those people that actually instigated him to be thrown, before they landed, the Bible said that the lion had already caught them, meaning that they were actually hungry. But God kept him. I don't know what lion could be around you in your career, in your place of work, in your family, self, maybe in your church. The presence of God will keep you. Amen. Because he said in the book of Psalm 46, verse 1, Psalm 46, verse 1, he said that our God is our refuge. He is the present word. Help. See, verse 1. He said that our God is our refuge. He is the present word. Help. In time of trouble, even when it seems as if things are not going on well, and that is the part that you perceive, you are convinced that God has designed for you to keep on going. Elisha kept on going. There are discouraging things. The sons of prophets they were making mockery of him, said that your master that you are referring will be taken away from. Him. He said that I know it now, and the master that you even encouraged him said, go back. For God must have spoken to him in his spirit. Don't go back. Ensure you follow this guy to the end. That is when the promise will be. In the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. The Bible said that when we are doing something that is good, don't be tired. Sometimes you feel tired. But don't be weary in well doing. Because if you do not think, but the thing that many people think, and they do not get to the point of that reward. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if what? <coughs> if we faint not. Every one of us sometimes we feel tired. Sometimes I hear calls from people that are high and mighty. These are people that have minions. They have houses. The pastor are not happy. <laughs> Calling me from different places. Letty from, from abroad. I'm not happy. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed with the challenges of life, but resist the temptation to give up. You have to resist. It's a fight. It's a fight sometimes. You have to. Elijah, after he has done so much, he felt like giving up. In the book of First Kings, chapter nineteen, four, verse eight, a almighty person like Elijah that destroyed over four or eight hundred. Prophets of Baal. <laughs> By the time Jezebel sent the message, I'm coming to get you. He did not expect that. Ah, after I've done this, wouldn't this woman be afraid? Why should God even allow her to even send this threat? He was, he had to run for his life. But he himself went the day's journey <laughs> into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, oh Lord, take away my life. He was feeling suicidal. For I am not better than my father. <coughs> Continue to eat. And as he laid and slept under a juniper tree, behold, 
Then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coal, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and he laid him down again. He needed rest. Sometimes the feeling of overwhelming requires rest. And the angel of the Lord came again and the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. <coughs> and he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mouth of God. He thought it was over, but he needed divine visitation. I don't know whether you are feeling tired. Sometimes I feel tired too. <laughs> but that is the time that you need divine visitation and divine strength from inside. Can you just pray that prayer? Say, Father, Father. divine is strengthen me <laughs> from inside in the name of Jesus. Strengthen me. I don't want to be faint. Sometimes I feel tired. I feel tired. I feel tired. That God, let this thing just name me. But sometimes you don't need God to encourage you again. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Say, Father, help me never to be faint. Let me never faint till I get to the end. In the name of Jesus, let me never faint till I get to the end. Encourage me. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So the main point we are saying is that once you are on the right path, even when there is no result at sight, and there are challenges, keep on going. One of the singers said, if you catch air, don't hold it. If you are going through air, don't stop. Just keep on going. That's the encouragement God that just sent me to somebody. You feel like quitting, but don't quit. The people that will not quit will get to the point that they will become celebrities in life. And I prophesy into your life. Wherever you are listening to me all over the world, by the reason of this ministration, receive new strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. That thing that you have been trusting in for, let the Almighty God graciously deliver unto you. Amen. Just like Elisha received double portion of the spirit of Elijah. That was what he actually desired. Let what you desire be granted unto you. Amen. And let all those people that have mocked you come and bow to you. Shall we rest our feet and God bless the name of the Lord? Let bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless her be Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for this word of encouragement to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will not give up. I will keep on moving till I see the glorious manifestation. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. Let your word be made manifest in our lives. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.